Greetings, what up, boys? Shout out to the Lost Boys, Lost Day Attack. All right, so we're going to be here in the building. Read BBS, BBS. Well, well, well. Mexican Independence Day weekend. Saturday, September 17th, featuring none, none other than Saul Canelo Alvarez, the straw that stirs the drink in the sport of boxing, uh, in a fight with a familiar foe, Gennady Gennadyevich Golovkin, professionally known as Triple G. This will be the third time they uh, square off. It's uh, been a memorable, it will have been a memorable, important trilogy. And this final chapter uh, will be written one way or the other. Now, before I swan dive deep into the way I see this final chapter being written, uh, please go ahead and subscribe. Feel free to comment. If you comment, I comment. That's how this works. I'm responding to any and all comments, positive, negative, or otherwise. Remember, sharing is caring. Love tap and or giving you a choice and or bitch slap that like button for your boy. Shout out to the homies at fightbeat.com. And on that note, uh, Fight Beat, we will be doing a live stream of Canelo Triple G Saturday. Rest assured. Uh, and for all the big fights that are on the horizon to complete this year, known as 20 and 22. NT Way. <clears throat> NT Way. Getting back to Triple G and Canelo. Let's reflect a minute. Let's remember the time when we first met, girl. Like Michael Jackson said, look, I love Canelo. He is boxing's most important current fighter. Easily. Easily. But with that said, my man lost. He lost the first Triple G fight. He lost it. Put it this way. Triple G got robbed in Canelo Triple G1. Period. Period. There's no other way to put it. Second fight uh, by this point, you know, the big big drama show. HBO, they sold the living shit out of Triple G's killer, assassin, you know, emotionless European Ivan Drago-ish persona. And admittedly, it became a bit of an intimidating presence for some of his opponents. But yeah, Canelo, Triple G2, that shat on that aura. That fight, fight two, shat on that aura. Canelo established the blueprint. He was fighting front foot heavy. He wasn't giving ground to Triple G, staying in the pocket with him. And most importantly, attacking Triple G's body. Triple G's one of those rare fighters. He takes headshots better than he does body blows. Like, you know... Very good chin, one of the best chins of this era of boxing. But yeah, you want to hurt Triple G, you go to the body. Well, Canelo exposed this to the masses. I do feel Sergey Derevyanchenko followed that same blueprint to an even higher level. He just got uh, the ass end of the decision when he exercised that same blueprint against Triple G. But Derevyanchenko beat him to me. Hell, even Camille Zerometa. He had Triple G flinching and reacting nervously and like visibly concerned about not getting touched to his body. Triple G don't like that shit. So with that said, uh, we got familiarity. These men have shared 24 rounds with each other. You got Canelo coming off a loss to an Asiatic Russian in Bevo. So yeah, why not? Why not get a W against another Asiatic Russian who you know like the back of your hand in Triple G? I will say, yeah, Triple G is not who he used to be. He looked, uh, he started slow in the Murata fight, his last fight. I think he had been off like over 400 days or something. And he's 40 now. He's like crossed the 40 threshold. But he, uh, from what I remember of the fight, he got his motor going around the third, fourth, fifth round. And he wore, not only wore Murata down, but broke him. Like, the thing with the thing with Triple G, there is no pity pat. I'm talking jabs, whatever punch he throws, 
There's some ass on that punch. He don't he don't throw nothing hard. No pity pat at all. At all. Now this fight here will be held at uh, 168 pounds. And that uh, segues me into what's always been a, a peculiar infatuation to me that Triple G has had with Canelo. It's always been about WWCD. What will Canelo do? Triple G has allowed his career to basically stall out and, and stagnate, basing his decision solely on Canelo's. Yes, Canelo, he prolonged the first fight with Triple G, the one that I admitted I scored for Triple G. After uh, Canelo beat Cotto, then he fights like Callum Smith and Amir Khan and Chavez Jr. Not sure on the order, but those are the three guys he wasted a year with. As Triple G is the best fight for him in middleweight. Here's my problem. At the same time, Triple G coasted too. During that same stretch, he could have moved up to 68, got him another belt, made his name that much more attractive. But no, he he he, he started fighting bullshit too. Like, okay, he's doing it, I'm going to do it. Then when Canelo signs with the zone, guess what? Triple G signs with the zone. You get, you get my point? Like, is this a... It's a weird infatuation. So the fact that Triple G is now having his first fight at 168 pounds, because it's Canelo, that's not surprising at all. In fact, that's very consistent with the career infatuation that I've noticed. Timing, uh, it's always been convenient for Canelo when these two meet, which it still is. But see, the difference is now, now the timing is bad. It's bad for Triple G. He is not the guy he used to be. And you got a more confident Canelo coming in there who's still in his prime. As you've, uh, yours is in, yours is in your rearview mirror, bruh. He's still in his prime. He knows how to beat you. He laid out the blueprint. He's going to exercise it painfully. I have to say Triple G is a consistent threat. Consistent and constant threat. Because, again, he don't throw no pity passes. You just can't be reckless and sleep on this dude. But, you know... Canelo's been there, done that. He's going to keep him in retreat, attack the body. I even see Canelo forcing Triple G to a knee. I don't believe he's ever been knocked down or dropped. I think Canelo forces him to a knee with some body shots. And then sometime late in the fight, he's going to force the ref or Triple G's own corner to stop the fight. That's how I see it. Give me your thoughts on it. Read BBS. BBS. Blackbird Sugar. Bachelors in Boxing Studies. Televisio. Fred Sanford of the Fistic Arts. When all is said and done, there's nothing left to say or do.